Hey there, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So thanks so much again for joining me here tonight. Uh, we are in the ABC Stitch Along. We are working on the jellyfish. We don't have the little top on yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, working on some French knots again today. And I'm still hoping that by Friday we'll be able to uh, do some free motion quilting on this guy plus another, a few other of our uh, alphabet letters here. So, all right, let's get uh, making some French knots today. All right, you guys, let's get going. I'm going to scoot you on over here. Okay, so... We left off last night with, uh, we are in the middle of doing some pink French knots. Uh, last night we went over the three things that you might be doing wrong with your French knots. And uh, um, I hope that was super helpful. <laughs> I mean, I hope it was helpful at least. Um, and it, if you missed that, we do have it available over on YouTube. I should probably make a, like, a little TikTok of that too. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, for you guys here. Uh, but tonight we're just finishing up the French knots. There's a whole pile of them left and they're all going to be the pink color. So we're just going to get going with that. Hello everyone who has popped in already. So we changed the color from the original design here. I think this used to be like a a light orange color, our goldenrod color. But for funsies, we've been changing up the colors of this whole project um, so far. So it's just been kind of fun. So we went with pink instead here. So why don't I walk through the French knot again for you guys. Uh, I, I won't go through like all the, the three things you might be doing wrong. I mean, I still could. Um, but I'll, I'll just walk through a French knot slowly for you guys because I know it can be kind of difficult. So, all right, I'm going to do this top French knot right here. I'm going to actually come up on one side of it. I am not going to come up in the middle of that dot. We're going to come up on one side. Oops, shoot. <laughs> Lost my needle. Hold on. Let's thread my needle again. There we are. Okay. So I came up on one side of the dot. I'm going to set my, uh, my, my uh, hoop on a, on a surface. It can be a flat surface. It can be your lap. Uh, it can be a pillow, whatever. It is just um, so you have both hands available. So I'm going to hold the uh, floss in my left hand here, and I'm going to point my, my needle towards my hand or away from the fabric. So I'm not pointing towards the fabric, I'm pointing away from the fabric. Then I'm going to loop around that needle twice. And then I'm going to hold those loops in place with my, my finger here. So now at this point, this is when I actually point back towards the fabric. So this is the first time I'm pointing towards the fabric. And I'm going to put my needle uh, in the fabric on the opposite side of the dot. So it's like we're going across our dot, not right in the middle. And I'm going to go about halfway, set it down again, and then I'm going to pull those loops so they're tight against the fabric and tight against the needle. Then I'm going to put my thumb on those loops. I can let go then, and I'm going to pull the needle through slowly. I'm, my finger's there to hold those loops in place just so that they don't uh, fly away from me. And there we go. We have a perfect little French knot. So let's do another one. So the reason I'm coming up on one side and ending on the other side is because if I go right in the middle of my dot, then I risk pulling, like if I come up through the middle and I go back down through the same hole, I risk pulling the knot to the front or to the back of the fabric. So you can like actually yank your whole entire knot to the back. So I avoid that by kind of crossing over, starting on one side of the pattern dot and going to the other side. So there's some fabric in between. Uh, you want to remember to point your needle 
at this point away from the fabric. If you point it towards the fabric, you'll end up with just like a tiny little stitch. And it'll be like, where's my knot? Uh, it's because you're pointing towards the fabric instead of away. So again, away. And then lastly, just holding those loops in place. If you don't, I mean, like some people, I mean, I guess a lot of people don't hold them in place. I, I really like that though. Uh, I find if I don't hold them in place, my loops sometimes just get away from me. And then I have these really loopy looking knots. They don't look like knots anymore. They're just either a mess or um, it just looks like a, some big loops there. Alright, well, I'm going to try and cruise through all these French knots tonight. It'll take a little while, but I don't have to like look anymore to see what color goes where because we've done the two other colors. Um, so all the rest of these is color number three, which we're doing with pink. Thanks so much for the follows, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever about embroidery or any other crafts, let me know. Um, and if it's something I don't know, then I'm uh, very, very excited to learn. I love learning everything about everything uh, related to, to crafting, um, just any, any sort of craft. I'm very much interested in it all. I've tried a lot of things, but, you know, I have a, a working knowledge of lots of things. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean I know what I'm doing or I've tried it before. Um, but I always am wanting to try more here. Oh, I should have maybe crossed over to the other side, gotten these ones. But we'll get... We'll finish this little um, area in between these tentacles. So, all right, we learned the anatomy of a jellyfish last night too. We have uh, the tentacles are the like long stringy little dudes, like the blue ones. And these are the, oh God, what are they called? The, the oral, the oral hands or something like that. What was that? What were these guys called again? I can't remember. I think the oral hands, such a funny name. So uh, we'll be working on the whole alphabet here. We're going in order, so we're on letter J. But we've been learning <laughs> other animal anatomy as we go along here too, which is just kind of funny. All right, hopped over to this other side in between the tentacles, and I'm just gonna kind of work my way back up to the top, and then we'll come back down. And actually, I'll probably be out of yarn by, by the time I get to the top. Out of yarn, out of, out of uh, embroidery floss here. Oh, geez, almost had a super loopy knot there, but it worked out. Oh, Sarah says, I've been learning how to embroider and I struggle not getting the back tangled up. Uh, one of the things that's helped me, hold on, this is really loopy. I'm gonna let that dangle. Uh, one of the things that's helped me a ton with uh, having my back be a whole lot nicer. Um, it's two things really. So here's here's my back so far. We are looking nice and clean still. So one of the things I do is I don't do knots on the back. I actually weave in the ends and we have some techniques for that like the away knot when you get started. But I like I like weaving in my ends instead of tying knots because I find that I always catch my thread on the knots which sucks. But I think the real thing that's helped me to have a clean back besides that is having my left hand pretty active in the back or whatever your non-stitching hand is. So for example, I'm going to start this French knot. And as I'm pulling through to the back, oh, actually, actually I'm not doing that all, all so well there, but I, I typically have my hand on the back feeling the stitches feeling the needle as as I come through and kind of I, I almost even move the thread out of the way before starting the next stitch like coming back up for the next stitch just so it doesn't tangle on itself and I just really have an active backhand just feeling feeling what's going on and uh, 
just by that, like here, I'm, I'm kind of like getting my hand in there, pushing my current thread out of the way so I can pull it up and feel if any shenanigans is going on there. Uh, but just having my left hand pretty active on the back, I can feel if there's a weird knot that comes up or it's just easier for me to feel if like, oh, that felt like it should have taken me a longer time to pull it through. So there might be a knot back there. It just, um, it's just like a, a third eye back there basically. So that, that's what helps me a lot. Just kind of like moving the thread out of the way with my left hand, always feeling like the needle coming through. All right, I think I'm gonna get one more knot up there. Oh, no problem, Sarah. Yeah, it, give that a try and, and let me know how that goes. It, 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 is, it is awkward getting used to it, uh, just having your left hand back there, but I do find it like super duper helpful. And I do just like actively, you know, push my old stitch basically out of the way while I'm pulling the thread through. Um, then it has less of a chance for it to like wrap up around each other in those like loopy knots that are annoying. All right, I think I'm gonna end with this. Ooh, I'm gonna end this floss with this knot. French knots are annoying when you don't have enough thread. So I think we're gonna end up at the top here. I'm gonna weave in this end and then I will uh, start. I do have another, the other half of our original thread here ready to go. I'm using three strands out of our six strands. So I don't know, I, will, I think I'll, I should be able to get all of these, I'm thinking, all the rest of them with this second piece of thread. I'm hoping so at least. So now again, instead of tying a knot, I'm gonna weave in the ends and I weave them back and forth uh, in the backs of the stitches. I do that about, I do that three times. It's that third time that kind of locks it in. Oh, Anne says, I think it was oral arms. Yeah, so the, those middle goopy, blobs like what we're doing with the French knot the French knots now are um, called oral arms <laughs> so they grab stuff and eat stuff if, uh, <laughs> is what that means to me which which makes sense I suppose so all right here's our second strand Oh, and just to let you guys know, I'm going to do our mystery gift again tonight. So order $20 or more in the shop, and I'll throw in a mystery gift uh, for no extra charge. And you don't need a code or anything for that. I will just throw it in your order. And that's for uh, the duration that we're live here tonight. So for about an hour here. And I'll leave it open a little bit after, um, you know, because if you're watching... If you're watching, you might not jump over there or um, might have something in your cart that takes a little longer to check out. So I'll let it go a little after we're done here too. All right, is there a dot there? I can't quite tell, I don't think so. So let's jump down here. Our next little square with our long thread again. I'm hoping this will last me the entire uh, rest of all these French knots. So French knots do take a lot of time. Like here, I'm having my left hand just feeling the back there. Um, French knots do take up a pile of floss. Like it just sucks up the floss, it seems like. So I have a hard time gauging how much I'll need, but I'm hoping it'll work. Oh, you guys, we have a full week of beautiful 70s weather. Ugh. I went outside a couple times today. I'm trying to do like 25 minutes on like whatever task I'm doing and then five minutes off. And for those five minutes, I'm actually doing seven minutes. I'm cheating. So for those seven minutes um, today, I use those seven minutes to just crochet outside it, it's just so, it was been so fun to just sit outside get a few stitches done i'm working on that um purple doily it was my emergency craft project i had it actually stored away for 
for years. It's just in my bag in case I need it. But now I'm now I'm just like actively working on it. So here it is so far, you guys. I got um, I um, chose colors with the help of uh, everyone on TikTok. They helped me choose um, the path that I'm going. So I'm gonna uh, use up. I'm gonna go in this order. Um, this kind of periwinkle, then blue, then this teal. And I started with the next color because I ran out of my last color. So I think it's kind of, I think the transition's not too abrupt. I was a little worried about it because originally I was going to do uh, this kind of darker purpley thing that's like leaning towards blue first, um, which would have blended in a lot more. But I think I'm only going to, I looked at the pattern a little, little more and I think I'm only going to have room for three more of these, maybe one more. So I might be able to put one more on, but I wanted to make sure to get as much of this teal in as possible. So I think it's going to be these three. Outside, the contrast looks really different. Like it's like, oh my God, I went like way far away from the color that was next to it. But inside, I, I think the transition doesn't look so so abrupt. I mean, it's going to be relatively abrupt, but I think it's going to, it's, it's the best I could do, I think. So, um, got that started. <laughs> I don't even have like, I'm not even like halfway done with it. It takes so long, but it's fun. So I've been chilling. That's been my chill project for, uh, for today. And it's just been fun, you know, pushing through on that 25 minutes. Like really, it's that Pomodoro technique. Have you guys heard of that before? It's that, um, oh, thanks, Caroline. Uh, it's that, I don't know, productivity sort of whatever. But you do 25 minutes on like a task, like a priority task or whatever. And you try and get it done within that 20 minutes or, you know, you focus on it in that 20 minutes where you're not like checking email or any of that other stuff, um, you know, not on your phone or whatever. You do that for 25 minutes and then you get five minutes off and you can do whatever. That's like your, your break time. So that's when you can check your phone or check your email or just do something relaxing. I've been doing the relaxing thing. That's like my reward for staying focused <laughs> for that 25 minutes, which is sometimes tough. Uh, so just been, and it was so beautiful today. So I just sat out on the stoop and like I said, I did seven minutes instead of instead of five. And then I just crocheted for seven minutes, listened to stuff in my headphones, and then came back in and did another 25 minutes. So I don't know, that's been working for me lately for focusing and getting stuff done and actually getting to do like fun stuff that I want to do, like the crocheting. So anywho, that allowed me to get a pile of stitches done on that, that project. So that's been fun. But yeah, that was my emergency craft project, which is just a, I always have some sort of project available to me if I'm out or I try to. So like, you know, if you find yourself standing in line forever or I don't know, let's say you got stuck in traffic and we're just stuck there for hours or something then, or you're like waiting for like an outdoor movie or something like that. I always like having something available to me if I get in stuck in a situation that I'm going to be in for a while. And then I got that emergency craft project. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I, I remember having this like at the Apple store for a while, like we had to sit there for like a couple hours or some sort of BS. And I think I remember having this particular um, project for that. And God, that was years ago. So I haven't needed an emergency craft project in a while, but I found it in my bag again, or we started talking about, about it or, or something. I had it nearby. And now that it's out, I just want to work on it. So I don't think it's my emergency craft project anymore. I think I got to, I gotta find a new emergency craft project to throw in my bag. I think it might be a tatting project. I think tatting is like theoretically an excellent uh, emergency craft project. It's so small and I can just 
spooled up a pattern and put it with some thread and the, the tatting shuttles and throw it in my bag. I think that's that's the new plan and I'm just gonna try and actively finish this this doily. It's just relaxing to stitch. I have no purposes of having uh, doilies around but I just really enjoy stitching them. Oh yeah, Linda. Linda says you brought it to John's knee surgery. Uh, so remind us how John's knee is healing. I I I did bring it to John's knee surgery. I think yeah, that's what we were why we were talking about it because I'm like oh I better make sure I have that emergency craft project. His knee surgery was so fast that I didn't even take it out. I like looked at my phone for like 20 minutes and then it was freaking done. So I didn't even need it for that. But he is healing well. Um. He can go on walks and all that. He just can't, um, he can ride bike, but just not like up hills and sideways and all, and all that. Just some steady bike riding and, and a little bit of walking. I mean, a lot of walking, but not like a big long hike or something like that. He can walk around our neighborhood and stuff, but I think he's feeling so much better. He doesn't have, it, have that same pain as before. It gets fatigued a little bit, I think, but it's nothing like how it was so I think he's very pleased and he gets to do like rehab stuff now which I think he kind of likes it's like an excuse to do a workout I think all right we got four more of these and then we're done with our little Frenchies so I'm hoping that we get his head done today as well. I would like to get this done today uh, or close and then tomorrow we focus on the satin stitches of the J. I'm kind of tempted, uh, I was thinking about this earlier, for the satin stitches to just use up whatever color is in our little cloud here that's already separated into two strands. So I know a lot of these uh, we were using for satin stitch somewhere else, so we are just kind of using two strands, like this one. I think we just use up, like here's a yellow that's just two strands. I think we just like grab whatever's two strands and just like start doing uh, satin stitch until our color is out. And then just see what it ends up being. I th thought that, was, that would be kind of a fun way to use up scraps. And have like a fun rainbowy looking... Uh, satin stitch for the J's. So that that will be Thursday and that won't take the whole time I don't think so Thursday will be satin stitching the J's and then we'll assemble we'll get this ready for quilting so Friday I do want to quilt um, all of our unquilted letters so far so that's the I, J and then letter G. None of those we've quilted and I think with the letter G we might try some hand quilting. So we'll machine quilt I and J, and then uh, we'll get the hand quilting stuff out and maybe start hand quilting the letter G, the giraffe. So that's that's the plan for the rest of the week. I definitely don't think we'll get the, I know for sure, we won't get the um, hand quilting done, but we'll get that started for sure. I'm thinking if all goes to plan, Hey Bailey, uh, do I have classes? I don't have like a structured class per se, um, but we do have uh, tons of videos. Um, I have like a little video um, thing of how to do like 14 different embroidery stitches. So I have a free pattern that you can actually get and that comes with like emails of 14 different stitches. Um, I don't have like a, a beginning to end class, but I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, so I'm more than happy to go over anything you want, even if it's not something we're working on. I can pull something out and we can give it a go. Um, but yeah, I should maybe do that sometime. <laughs> I'm here, I'm just here every night, so I, I haven't really thought about doing a class, but that'd be a good idea, just like a quick like embroidery, embroidery how-to. But I'm more than happy uh, to do so, do something. Oh, you've been getting the emails. They're great. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, Bailey. 
yeah, I, I, you know, would totally do a class sometime. Um, yeah, just like uh, getting started and going through the stitches and, uh, I don't know, let me, you guys, let me know what else you might want in a class or maybe it's just consolidating all the stuff that we do in these lives and stuff, but you know, so it's short <laughs> and not a zillion hours. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in a class and, and what you'd want for that. I'd be interesting to hear what you guys, your thoughts are. All right, I'm looking for my purple, which I don't see, which makes me think it's hiding somewhere. There it is, oh my gosh, way the hell over here. There we go, so here's our purple. Um, uh, so this is gonna be for the outside here. Oh, an embroidery like 101 class. I think that'd be f super fun, Bailey. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit more. I think that would be kind of nice. All right, I am just searching to see if there's any little pieces of this that we haven't used yet. Okay, so this has three, three strands, so we'll use that. What else do we got in here? I think that might be it for, oh no, this is, this is that color too. Ooh, that's kind of a decently long piece. Man, I have two pieces that are of decent length that are of the three strands. So we'll use those first. That looks like maybe it, I'm not, I keep seeing the pink, but that's, that's not the same. Oh, this, this looks the same. This looks like more of the purple. Wow, how did we get so many purple scraps? Light purple. All right, I think that's, yeah, I think that's what we're working with here. So, okay, what, what's this one all about? Ugh, this is a mess. What is going on here? All right, so this is three strands. Oh, wait. Oh, this is like four strands. This is just a mess. Hold on, what do we got here? I think I have four strands here, but we're a little tangled. Probably don't really need to dink around with this right now, but it's gonna annoy me. That's the problem with having it all in a giant mass of stuff. Well, this is three strands. Okay, so we have I have three things of three strands, so man, I'm thinking we have plenty of scraps here. I don't, I don't know how we came to have all these nice scraps. So, all right, I'm just gonna start with one, double check. Yeah, this is three strands, great. All right, so let's get a needle here. Okay. So uh, this whole outline is this light purple, so we'll get that going. So I'm gonna just weave in, I think we'll just weave in this end here. And I think what I'm gonna do to start out with is we're gonna go around this bottom edge. So now this bottom line, it's like behind all of our little tentacles. So the tentacles are in front. So I'm going to have to kind of duck underneath, like I'm gonna have to slide my stitches underneath uh, all these previous stitches just to get the effect of that this line is gonna be behind. So normally I would maybe have done that first, doing like the thing furthest back first, but you know, in this case, I didn't do that. So I'm gonna have to like mimic it by kind of getting my stitches behind there. So I think that'll make sense in a, in a second here. Oh, how is that a not a tangled mess? It very much is a is a tangled mess. I mean, if I shushed this around in my hands, then it would be a super duper tangled mess. So uh, I am able to pull stuff out of here, but it is kind of being weird. So I am trying to actively use um, the scraps. So th all of this is just scraps from, you know, I pull a couple threads from, from here, stitch what I need to stitch. And then, you know, a lot of times there's like a little bit left over. I've been just plopping it in this pile. This, this is actually looking a lot smaller than it was, which makes me happy. Um, so I'm, I'm actively trying to use from here first. And that's why I was like with the, with the satin stitch for the letter J's when we do that, I want to maybe just like pull from, from there. 
just some random colors just to use up more more scraps. I think that'd be kind of a fun way to use it up some more. But yeah, actively trying to use that stuff up first before pulling all new strands. Okay, um, so I think we'll just start here. I'm gonna be doing back stitches. So this is gonna be a little tricky. There's a lot of tight curves. So I was kind of talking about this a little bit last night on tight curves, like, like here, like these are kind of some pretty abrupt curves. For that, I, I like to make my stitches a little smaller because then you can get more of that curved effect um, versus longer straighter lines. So I might do slightly smaller stitches here and they might get like bigger around like this straight edge here. Kind of how I was talking, talking yesterday, like these are bigger stitches and they look kind of like pointy as I go around that curve. Whereas if I just add a few more, because all our stitches are straight, right? Um, we're making, we're not making curvy stitches. We're making a bunch of straight stitches next to each other, a bunch of tiny straight stitches. So if the stitches are bigger, it's going to give a more pointy effect around a tight curve like this. But if we do more stitches that are smaller, then like from far away, this does appear more like a curve, even though we are still just making straight stitches. So uh, this is why around tight curves, I do try and add a few more little stitches um, just to get the appearance of a curve more than like my normal stitch size, which, you know, that's looking pretty pointy uh, versus that's a little bit more curved feeling. So that's, that's kind of what we talked about the other night. And I just had that sitting out here still. So that's why these stitches will be a little bit more baby size than like these ones here. Oh, hey, Marie. Marie says, uh, hi, Alyssa. Hello, everyone. The jellyfish is so cute. Oh, thanks so much. I watched the replays. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so we have all the replays of these over on YouTube. If you're watching on TikTok, the view will be a hair different, but basically the same. Just horizontal. Ooh, seven degrees Celsius uh, by you, Noeline, today. Oh, you're waiting on your groceries. <laughs> so you may have to go suddenly. Well, it's nice, nice seeing you pop in. We gotta go grocery shopping too. We had, uh, uh, my family was over for the weekend and or a bunch of a bunch of family and uh luckily they brought a bunch of food because we didn't have any food <laughs> so so we're eating we're eating uh, the leftovers from that still but we're, we really need to get to the grocery store really soon here all right so right here is an example of you know like i said i wanted i want this line of the jellyfish it's like the back of the jellyfish right i want that to feel behind everything else here so if i if I complete this stitch, it's going to actually be in front of that, that tentacle, but I want this line to be behind the tentacle. Like if you're thinking about this as a real life thing, that um, this line here would be behind everything else. So what I'm going to do to like fake that is I'm going to actually go slide my needle underneath that stitch and then go back in my hole from the last stitch. So we've just basically made a stitch underneath the tentacle. So now, now that purple, this line is underneath um, that line. So it feels behind. I mean, it's literally behind. It's physically behind that, that, that too. So we'll do this stitch and then I got to do that all throughout here. I think it won't matter through the French knots. I think we'll just be going around those. That's going to be a little annoying, but we'll, we'll get it. But all these tentacles, I want to, I'm going to have to slip behind. All right, through the French knots. Not really happy about this. I usually leave my French knots to the end if I can, because uh, I'm always afraid that when I'm doing like back stitches or other sort of stitches, I'm going to get caught like wrapped around one of those French knots, which will be annoying. But so far, so good. 
All right, now here I gotta slide through underneath this tentacle and I'm surrounded by French knots. It's a little obstacle course of embroidery right now. Ooh, does this line go above that dot or below? Actually, my line might end. I think I actually just pop up over here. Let me just double check on the pattern. Oh yeah, I do. I just kind of end and then all those little dots are in front and then I pop up again on the other side. Okay. I think I may have added a few more stitches than I need to do. Well, that's fine. All right. I'm going to actually just slide underneath this stitch a little and then go forward into the next spot. There we go. So I still have the effect of it being this line being behind the tentacles. Okay, I'm gonna need to slide under again. Ah, uh, Nolene, you have to tell us what fun stuff you got from the grocery store. I've been craving like gummy bears. <laughs> uh, luckily I don't go to that grocery store all, all the time. So, um, but man, John brought me home gummy, gummy bears once. Some days you just need some gummy bears, right? <laughs> so he got me some gummy bears, uh, and, uh, they were like the yummiest things ever. So now I'm a little scared to go to that grocery store. Um, it's one that's right next to us. We have so many grocery stores in our like immediate area. We're really like lucky that way um, for sure. Uh, so we go to like a food co-op that's near us, but there's even a store closer to us that we can walk to. And that's the one with the, uh, the fancy um, gummy bears. So I'm a little scared to go there because I'm afraid I'm going to just buy all the gummy bears not stick to my healthy stuff. Ugh, but yum. Those would be so good. All right, so now I'm not going to worry about going behind the stitches. Well, I don't really have to because I'm just kind of hovering around the top. Uh, but these stitches are going to look like they're in front of the blue lines. I'm actually going to cross over them. I'm not going to go in the same, I'm never going to go into like the same hole as these blue ones. I'm always going to kind of cross over them, the ends, because then it'll feel like these lines are in front, uh, which it is. So this is like the front of the, the front of the jellyfish. So the line should feel in front of everything else. So all the, the tentacles and these oral arms, <laughs> these goopy little French knots, those will appear like in the middle of this line that we did behind and then the line that we're going to do in front here. So I'm almost out of floss. I'm going to weave this in soon. And then we had a few extra scrap pieces. I'm so happy that we can use these scrap pieces for this though. Ooh, that one almost caught on my French knot. Not quite though. All right, I think this is my last stitch. Oh yeah, we're pushing it. And let's weave that in. Hey, Robin. I hope you're doing well. All right. Ooh, can barely fit the other way. There we go. A little snip. I have been um, today using uh, my little strawberry tray. I have been using it, this as a little garbage, the, the little top container part. And man, that does keep uh, my area so nice and clean. I love it so much. All right, let's get our next little piece out. So again, this is already split into the three, so I can just get going with it right away. <laughs> Jenna says, what fun you're having. I, this is the best part of the day. I get to hang out with uh, you guys here. Um, I'm also on YouTube and Facebook right now, so I get to hang out with all of you guys and I always learn so, so much and have a fun time hanging out. 
So best part of the day. <laughs> I'm here every evening at, at 8.30. And we can just chit chat, do some stitching. So tonight yet, or this week yet, I'll, I'm going to be, you know, finishing up this jellyfish and some of those other letters from the alphabet. And then next week, you guys, we're doing some more embroidery. So the first couple of weeks are heavy in embroidery this year. Uh, but we'll be doing the embroidery of the month, which I'm so excited for. It is the, the lilac. Man, I'm all about the purple lately. Dang, like we have all the purple in this guy. And I've been working on that purple doily. <laughs> we got, man, this like totally matches. Look at it. It's like almost the same colors here. Oh, lost a, here's my other color. It almost like totally matches. These should be friends. I should like combine these somehow. That'd be fun. But anyway, so the lilac we'll be stitching next week. Uh, that's our embroidery of the month. And then, then the week after, so we have a couple free weeks. Um, I do want to work on the Splendid Sampler 2 a little bit more. So that's a quilting project. We're, we're still, it's a, it's a project we've been deep into for years. <laughs> I'm trying to put... I'm trying to put um, some more time into that. So we'll do a little bit on that and then we will, I don't know what project we'll work on. Oh, maybe we'll work on this some more, like starting to assemble our quilt as you go blocks. That'd be, that would be kind of fun. Um, we'll see, we'll see what pops up as a fun thing to do uh, towards the end of the month. It's always nice to have those free weeks. We've scheduled our, our first few weeks. So the first week of the month we, work on one of these letters, um, we're going in order. And then the second week we work on the letter that comes after that. Third week is the embroidery of the month. And then the fourth week is the splendid sampler plus, you know, a free week. And then every once in a while, like this month, we get a whole other bonus week. That's always fun. Oh, thanks so much, Robin. I mean, uh, you know, no one's obligated for sure, but I, I do, I do appreciate I do appreciate it a ton. How do you get the hoop marks off after you're done? So Janet, in this case, oh, the nails look so pretty. Is that a blend? Uh, I'll, I'll let you know in a sec here, um, Lynn. Um, how do I get the marks out when I'm done? So in this particular piece, I am not going to. So uh, this is an iron-on pattern that I used. And uh, the iron-on is permanent or like semi-permanent. Like if I wash this a bunch of times, it'll get like way lighter. But it's, it's, this one's permanent, so uh, um, I'm just going on that I'm going over the stitches, so they, it won't actually come out uh, in, this, in this case. I'm going to, like, travel. So sometimes when I'm not, oh gosh, look, I got one of these knots. So just, just quick, if you do get one of these, like, loopy knots, this is super duper common in embroidery, and this one one might like stump me a little bit but uh, if you put your needle in and pull on one of the threads either this side or this side uh, one will tighten it one will um, move the knot up to the needle like like it's doing right now so once I get that knot all the way up I can pull my needle out and then I can just pull both sides and it should just pop out there we go hate those knots those are so common at least for me um, in in embroidery but yeah, so if I wanted to really make sure that I didn't have any of these stitches um, or any of my lines when I'm done, I would have used a different technique like a, a stick and stitch uh, stabilizer. That's where you can print the design right on or trace the design right onto like this stabilizer. It acts like a sticker. You stick it onto your fabric and then you can stitch right through it and it comes off with water. Or I would maybe trace the design onto my fabric with a water sol soluble marker. Um, those would be the way that I would typically, um, if I was really worried about, like if I didn't think I'd be able to cover all my lines with the stitches, then I would use um, one of those techniques. Uh, the, the, um, my nails, <laughs> they're not a blend. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on week three now, so they're kind of growing out a little bit. Uh, these are those dip nails. Um, I don't remember this color, but I do actually really like this color. It's, it's just like 
simple and subtle and just a little, that little pinky, a nice pinky color. Um, but I am thinking, so I got to do my nails this weekend. I am kind of thinking of doing like a little bit of a blend of, of the colors that I have. I haven't experimented with that yet, so I'm kind of excited about that. So we'll see. We'll see how I feel this weekend. Uh, when I'm done, I take your fabric out. How do you get the hoop marks out? Do you iron? I do iron, so I will iron around the edge. Uh, if I have to iron the whole piece, like if it's really wrinkly, uh, one thing I do is um, a lot of times, like if I'm using stick and stitch, my fabric will be wet. But in, in this case, uh, one thing I might do, like if, it, if this got really wrinkly, I would maybe spray it with a little bit of water. And then what I like doing is I put a really fluffy towel on my ironing board or my ironing mat, like a, like a bath towel. And I will put um, the design face down, like out of the hoop. And then I will press. And when it's wet, you can press right on the back and everything too. Um, and that will, because it's on a fluffy towel, it shouldn't squish any of your stitches. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I do if it's, if it's too big of a problem. Um, but yes, I will, I will, in this case, I'll probably just iron the edges, but if it is really bad, then I kind of dampen the piece a little bit and then really give it a good press on the, on the back with that fluffy towel. Do I ever dangle the needle, needle to uncurl the floss? I do. I definitely do, Lynn. Uh, certain stitches, I feel like twist up the thread a little bit more or if I'm doing like the sewing method of embroidery where I go in and out um so where I go like like this where I go in and out in the same motion like like so I feel like that kind of twists my yarn a little bit more so yes in that case I will just kind of let it let it kind of dangle dangle like that um, I feel like with the back stitch I don't have to do that so often Will I be recording? Oh, yes. Okay, so uh, good news on that, uh, Sheila. So um, Sheila's saying, hi, listen, everyone. Love the jellyfish. I appreciate that so much. Um, will you be reordering the penguin and fish needle minder soon? I have them reordered, and they are on their way, you guys. It should be here. They might even be here this week. So I am super-duper stoked. So... Um, and we have a couple other colors of the penguin and fish needle minder this time as well. And we will add those to the listing. So if you want to be notified first, uh, make sure to go to the listing, the needle minder listing um, on penguinandfish.com and uh, click the button that like, you know, it'll say sold out, but like right above that, it'll say like email me a reminder or something like that. Make sure to get your email on there. And the moment we update the listings with a new quantity, you'll automatically be uh, emailed. So you'll have like a first dibs before we even announce that it's here or, you know, on the site. So that's, that's the best way to do it, <laughs> to be notified right away. But they are so on their way. Like I have UPS tracking. Um, it, it, I, the tracking isn't, you know, available yet. So they're just like shipping it today or something. Um, so, uh, but it should be, I think it's, it's gotta be priority mail. It's gotta be heavy enough for priority mail. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the week, it may be here. Ooh, Robin's asking if, if John and I are doing a garden this year, we are, and we are because my family came this weekend and kind of did it for us. <laughs> So we had uh, lettuce and uh, um, spring onions and some kale come up and, and like raspberries come up on their own, but they brought, my parents brought some tomatoes and peppers and uh, my dad and John kind of weeded the garden and got the hoses set up. So they just kind of went at it this weekend and, uh, and uh, finished our garden. So. If it wasn't for them, I don't know if we, if we, um, my parents coming, I don't know if we would have a garden, but we definitely super duper have a garden now and I'm stoked. And we even have like, um, I think we even have cuttable lettuce at this point too, which I'm, which that's going to be my weekend project, cutting some lettuce and bringing it on in. All right, you guys, we had like just a enough thread for, um, this purple and I still have... I still have a little scrappy bit left, which is just so funny. Um, so we have a nice piece left yet.
but we used up two pieces from my little scrap pile. That always feels good, using up, using up the scraps. Oh, interesting, Lynn. Uh, Lynn says, I remembered the trick to polish removal. Uh, silicone fingertip covers with acetone on cotton stuffed in. Ooh, so the silicone finger covers, that's interesting. So I do have those little like clampy clamps. Um, I'm going to try, so this is the fourth time I've done, done the, the um, dip nails. So this is my fourth, fourth color. So this will be the fourth time I've tried to take it off. So, which means I've tried to take off my nails three times so far. Each time has taken forever and ever. And I tried where I dip my fingers in like the acetone and hot water. Um, I did put a little coconut oil in it that time. And then, then I also tried like putting in the cotton ball and then like putting the little like finger clamp thing on. And man, I don't know. It just, everything feels like it takes ages. Although my mom did it uh, the other day um, at a place and there they, I'm going to give that hot water in the plastic bag another try. Uh, but the difference that I'm going to do compared to the other one, and this is what they did um, at my mom's thing. I'm going to just pick some colors here for, for his little face. Let's do the black. Oh, I kind of like the red. Let's do a red mouth and, and black eyes. Um, but what she did was the plastic bag and put a couple, a couple paper towels there and then like straight acetone. So I'm not going to, like my experiment, here's the variables that I'm changing. I'm not going to put the coconut oil in so my hands might get a whole lot drier but then it's just straight acetone um, in the hot water in the bag and then uh, the thing that i didn't do yet that i think i need to is i haven't super duper sanded down the tops of my nails beforehand i just tried it without so that seems to be like a factor that i'm missing so i'm gonna really 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 file down my nails basically trying to get the top coat off i think is kind of the key and then I'm going to try the hot water and the paper towels and acetone. And we'll just, ugh, if that doesn't do it, then, oh man, I don't know. But like, it's like a whole day. <laughs> I feel like, like literally, like it takes me like five hours. I mean, I'm not even sure I'm exaggerating. I don't think I am. But five hours, like beginning to end to take off the nails, which takes forever. And then, you know, shaping them so they're all nice again. Uh, the right shape and all and then doing the dip powder again let that whole process uh i'm actually getting tired thinking about that so this better work <laughs> is, is what i'm thinking oh yes use the heavy duty emery, emery board okay that's i think that's the part i'm missing oh those clips are awful if you use the covers when you pull them off Oh, if you use the covers when you pull them off the polish comes off with oh this the, the silicone fingertip covers Dang, I'm going to have to try that too. But yeah, so this next time I'm trying the hot water again, but with the like totally taking off, um, like really, 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 really sanding the fingertips first. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right, you guys, I'm going to do that same thing that we did on the inchworm for these eyes. And I think we'll just probably finish the eyes tonight and we'll have to finish the smile tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to leave a little bit of thread out at the end, uh, enough to do one last stitch. And I think that's gonna work for us again here. So we're gonna like give him like little laser eyes for for a moment. So that's, that's enough thread for like one stitch and for me to weave in the end. So I'm just gonna kind of hold that there. And again, I'm making super teeny stitches so we can get the effect of a circle. So I'm, I'm, whenever I do like these little eyes, I always kind of work in a hexagon shape. I feel like that gives me the effect of a circle versus like a diamond shape because that still kind of looks like a diamond, I think. But a hexagon, that looks pretty circular. So I'm going to stitch every stitch except for that last one because we're going to come back to that. There we are. All right, and I'm going to weave in that end. So the whole reason I'm doing this is so I'm not 
uh, I'm starting like in a fresh spot. I'm not like weaving into the purple and then jumping over. I don't want these jump lines. Um, so I'm being pretty picky with that. I mean, uh, one thing I know a lot of people do, and I should try this sometime, is I, is stitching with a second piece of fabric behind here. So you're actually embroidering through two pieces of fabric. Because then if you do these jumps, like if I jump from here, this eye to this eye, you know, normally you'd be able to see that big line from the front, but um, you wouldn't be able to as much with like one, um, with um, the two fabrics behind. So I should try that. Ooh, look at this. I have a little knot hiding in there. Ah, jerk butt. So I got one of those loopy knots. I'm going to just try and see if I can tuck that in. I can tell it's getting late because I'm getting pickier and pickier. I get more in perfection mode when it gets late. So there, I'm just tucking that in, <laughs> hiding a little loopy knot that we had so I can't see it from the front. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here, and then I'll go back and do those last stitches and tuck in these little like laser eyes that we got, little black laser eyes. <laughs> I like doing it this way, um, leaving this little end out. I think that's kind of fun. Oh man, it was definitely, Robin, a treat to have my parents come in and my brother to uh, help. Um, just, we magically all of a sudden had a garden. <laughs> and we also um, picked a ton of the spring onions, which are just spreading all over the place. But we picked a whole pile of them and cleaned them off already. So I have uh, like all these like little onions that are ready to just chop up. I'm going to do a whole, like I, I, I have to like, I have to spend the weekend like cooking, I think. Um, but just chopping all those up and like I might freeze them and then I can put them on salads and stuff whenever or put them in soups or whatever. But it's I'm just gonna have ma magic onions from our garden already. It's crazy. I love it. All right, so let's weave in this little end here and then we'll tuck in those colors from the the eyes from the front oh yes he's totally he's crying uh crying black tears here <laughs> that's totally what it looks like i like to think of it as like laser eyes like those laser laser cats it's a laser jellyfish <laughs> um all right so here's the deal so i left enough thread hanging out to do one last stitch plus weave in the end. So all I got to do now is thread this. Oh, it's kind of like a little bit of a mess here, but let's see if I can still thread it without trimming. Haha, <laughs> got it. All right, so I'm going to finish that stitch. There we go. And now we just have to weave in that end as well. Just going in and out of here a couple times. There's a lot of thread back here now, so it's a little tough to weave it in, but we're doing it. Get in there. There we go. Ooh, my pleasure, Lynn. All right, so snip that little bit, and he's garbage. Toss him in there. And let's get the other dude. This is just nice to do it this way sometimes, um, just leaving that little end out. It, it's annoying when, you know, it gets in the way, like if you're doing a lot of stitching, but just for these little eyes, we're hardly doing any stitching, and it's just an easy way to do it. So there we go, last stitch, and weave in those ends. One. Oh, that's decent, two. in there. Three. All right. Snip that. And there we go. He's looking nice. Much nicer with the, the head in there now. Um, we still have that smile to do, but I think we'll finish. We'll do the little smile tomorrow and then the J. So I, I think all that won't take the whole time. 
which is great because I do want to assemble these pieces. Um, so we're going to assemble it like how we did the giraffe here. Uh, we have it all pinned together. We have pinned the back fabric, our batting, and the front. We have that all pinned together so that we can go in and quilt it, uh, quilt it on Friday. So this is sewn all the way through. Um, everything is assembled, the three layers. So we're basically making a pile of these mini quilts that we will later sew together. Uh, it's called the quilt as you go method. So tomorrow, by the end of tomorrow, I would like um, the this jellyfish done, first of all, and assembled with pins, uh, like how this giraffe is. And then we also have uh, the inchworm that we need to, need to do the same thing for, and I need to iron it and everything too yet, so we'll iron tomorrow as well. Um, or not, yeah, tomorrow. So we'll assemble all of the stuff tomorrow, and then Friday we'll be all ready to, to quilt. So I'll set up this whole area for some free motion quilting, and we'll do um, some quilting on my sewing machine. <laughs> I'm so excited. That's always so fun. I, I, I love doing that. It's always, I feel it's one of those things that I'm learning um, still, like, I, I definitely don't feel 100% confident in <laughs> my skills with uh, free motion quilting, so so I just get excited about being able to practice it some more, um, and this, this project has been great for that. So I'm super stoked on that. Um, all right, so that will be that for tonight so thank you guys again for coming um oh i uh, i forgot to talk about this today um a lot but we are still doing the deal uh, order twenty dollars or more in the shop and i will put a mystery gift in your order at no charge and you don't need a code or anything i will just put it in so i will have that open for a few minutes like 10 minutes or so after we're done here it's typically just for when we're when we're live but i'll let it i'll let it go for another um five ten minutes or so if you have something in your cart or something that you're looking at and uh yeah i'm excited to curate a little mystery gift for you <laughs> So thanks again, everyone. I will, oh, Sheila, I am going to quilt one by hand. I'm going to quilt the, the giraffe. So, to, so on Friday, we will machine quilt the uh, uh, jellyfish and the inchworm. And then we will start quilting, because I think we'll have enough time. We'll start quilting, hand quilting the giraffe. So we will be doing that. Um, I think it was mentioned yesterday, and I'm like, yeah, let's do one. Uh, so the draft was the leftover one of, as far as ideas go. We have uh, quilting ideas already for the, the I and the J. So um, I think the draft, we will we'll do some hand quilting. Uh, so we'll, we'll get going on that on Friday, too. So ooh, excited for that, too. <laughs> That's another one that I need more practice in, for sure. Uh, but awesome. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, I will be back here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Uh, thanks again for joining, and I will see you then. Good night.